Today we are starting a three-week mini-series on how to witness a building management system. So this series is primarily focusing on mechanical consultants that need to go to site at the end of the project and review the BMS and then sign off the BMS as part of the witnessing process. This video would also be interesting for mechanical contractors who are managing their subcontractor, the BMS company. You could get a few ideas about things for you to look out for as you are approaching practical completion to try and have a smooth running process and, and more success in getting the BMS signed off in the first few phases. And then lastly, of course, if you're a BMS company, you're a BMS engineer, and you're the person that's gonna be sitting there and presenting the BMS to the mechanical consultant, you might get a few ideas of things that you should focus on. Um, because usually, you know, BMS companies um, in the mad rush to achieve an impossible date are often focusing on really important things, and they are important, but they might not be the actual things that the mechanical consultant is gonna be looking at, in which case it might be better just to consider changing your mindset and thinking about some of these other softer type things that will help you get the job over the line. And you can still fix up those other things afterwards before handover. Now, rather than explain to you like a, you know, a 10 point process of how I witness a BMS system, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run through and I'm gonna tell you what I do on the first day, the second day, and the third day of BMS witnessing. Because I've found that you know, the traditional way that we used to witness BMS systems, which was I'd come to site, I'd sit down and say, okay, look, let's go through the chiller staging program, show me a stage up. What I've found is that that process, that method that we used to use doesn't really work very well um, because the BMS isn't normally ready when the first witness session, session happens. So I'm gonna describe through my process as the days go by, which I have adapted um, over the last few years as I do a lot of BMS witnessing. Um, other than these sort of the training videos that I do and, and this YouTube type stuff, um, I'm a BMS consultant, so most of my revenue comes through the consulting side of my business. And as part of that, you know, me doing, um, you know, consulting works directly to facility managers, building owners, I do a lot of freelance BMS consulting. So most weeks I will be going to a site and doing BMS witnessing, and I'm either representing the core mechanical consultancy that did the design, or I am representing the client's independent reviewer and I'm sub to them to do BMS sign-off. So I do a lot more sign-off, I think, than most people for the BMS. Okay, so it's day one. It's the first day of BMS witnessing, you're the mechanical consultant, and you go down to site. What today's video is about is to understand that that first BMS witness session that's been arranged by the mechanical contractor and the builder, that is a political milestone in the project program. It doesn't mean the BMS is ready for witnessing. It just means that as all the preceding trades ran late to the project and air and water balancing ran late and the BMS commissioning got compressed and compressed and compressed and the end date didn't move, there was a date there called BMS witnessing and today is that day. It does not mean the BMS is ready for witnessing. It's a political milestone. So what I have learned in the last three or four years as I've been adapting my method of how I do BMS witnessing is that I don't go to site anymore and get upset about the state of things and why am I there. I'm just used to it now. So I have adapted my witness session. And what I do is I call that first day the BMS sanity check. It's a two hour sanity check. It's not BMS witnessing. There is no point sitting down with a BMS company um, who basically um, had the plant in auto yesterday. Because how many times when you go do BMS witnessing, you get there and there's three things. Either air and water balancing is still happening and all the heating valves and cooling valves are fully open, all the pumps are at design speed, all the VAVs are at VMAX, all the AHUs are at design volume, all the outside air dampers are positioned for design outside air. Either that's happening, they're still doing that, 
but for some reason we're still trying to do BMS witnessing. Or alternatively, that's finished and um, we're trying to do BMS witnessing at the exact same time as mechanical witnessing. So they're checking flow rates and volumes. Now I'm like, I can't do anything. It's, everything's in manual. And the third situation is, is if that was actually finished, it's usually finished a day or two ago. So even if you sit down in front of the BMS and everything is actually an auto, which to be honest, in my experience, the last two or three years, it's not an auto. The BMS company has had no time to actually run through the chiller staging and get the pressure control right. Everything's hunting everywhere. So there's no point getting to site and saying to the BMS guys, hey, let's do chiller staging. Um, and then you write 20 or 30 defects just on the chiller system and chew up that whole session just on one system, which failed and has to be re-witnessed later on when it's actually being commissioned and is actually ready for witnessing. So in my first sanity check of the BMS, my first two hours, this is what I do. And I found this to be the most productive use of my time and provides the most value to the project is I do not check any control strategies. I do not check any interface testing. You know, the interface, the third party trades, you know, lifts, fire, hydraulics, security, lighting control systems, they're flat out busy trying to witness their own stuff. So that wouldn't be done anyway. So what I do is I sit down, I sit at the BMS company, the BMS engineer who's sweating by now because he's been working, you know, like, you know, 12 hour days for the last six weeks. I said to him, look, let's go through all of the graphics for the entire building. I spend an hour just going through all the graphics. So the chiller graphics, the boiler graphics, cooling towers, every single air handling unit, if that's practical. If it's 30 floors, I'll do between five and 10 floors, open up the graphic and have a look at it. Car park ventilation, toilet exhaust systems. I open up each page, the fire monitoring points, hydraulic monitoring points, lift monitoring points, electrical. I'm not checking if they're working, I'm just opening the pages. And the purpose there is that I have found that between one hour and one and a half hours, I can get through the entire building and write up 30, 40, 50 defects on what the current state of the building is. And usually the BMS company will be quite happy to volunteer the status because they know they're not ready. So if I open up the chiller page and um, all the valves are overridden, I just write there, BMS not ready for witnessing. Um, you know, water balancing incomplete. If I open up the AHU page, and it's all overridden, you know, the, the valve's overridden and the damper's overridden and the supply fan, the return fan's overridden. I just write there, AHU's not ready for BMS witnessing. If there's no power in basement three yet and the car park control panel's powered down, I write there, no power in basement three. So I just write there, you know, not commissioned, not commissioned, blah, blah, blah. Um, if the fire page, the graphic hasn't been built yet, I write there, fire graphic not built yet. I'll say to the BMS guy, have you tested the lift points with the lift manufacturer yet together? He'll say, he'll always say no. All right there, lift's not done yet. So in that one shot, in that one two hour session, I have a full picture of the entire BMS, where it's at, every single system, where it's not at. And that is very useful. I'll get onto that in a second. But what I first want to say before I forget, is so that's the first thing graphics the second thing i do is i ask the bms project manager how are you tracking with your point to point commissioning sheets and because commissioning won't be quite complete yet it might be 80 percent complete but it won't be complete completely and normally the project manager would say something along the lines of look we're still busy with commissioning i haven't formalized the final documentation that's fine um, sometimes they might have printed out a, a file of point to point commissioning sheets hard copy sometimes they won't the main point here is I'm explaining to them that point-to-point -point commissioning is on my critical path to sign off. You cannot sign off a BMS system is complete until it's been commissioned, at least. There's other things you could compromise on, but every point, every valve, every damp, every sensor, it has to have been properly commissioned. So every time I go to witnessing, every day I go, I said the exact same thing. How's the commission sheets going? I have to have the commission sheets. So they've got that bit of a window. They know that at the end, when at the pointy end, we've got to sign off. Um, I have to have that. So I do that. Um, if they do have a file there, or on the laptop, they have like all the PDFs or the spreadsheets, I'll just sit there for 10 minutes and just page through all the commissioning sheets. Flip, 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 flip. If it's on the laptop, I just tab through the tabs, down the PDF, whatever it is. 
I just make sure that the process has been properly followed because I need that at the end and that commissioning is actually happening and there isn't any big surprises that um, no one knows about yet. So um, if there's a couple of points not done here and there, I don't even write that down. It's the process I'm focusing on day one. The third question I ask them is metering validation. Electric meters, water meters, gas meters. Your spreadsheets that have the electric meters, the kilowatt hours of the meter, the kilowatt hours on the BMS. How, how's that tracking? Um, because again, you cannot sign off a building management system if uh, that hasn't been done. And in, you know, we'll get to, in another day, we'll get to um, how to witness that meter validation stuff. So it's the three things. Day one, all the graphics, point-to-point -point commissioning sheets, and the metering sheets. And I might check a few trends and a few alarms as I'm there. So that's you know, an hour to an hour and a half. And then what I do is I pack up, and on the way out of site, I go through two or three big plant rooms, take a bunch of photos, and do my quality inspection, go and open up a few BMS control panels. Are there wires everywhere or not? It's a good indication of progress, um, how clean the panels are. So I do that. A good way to think about it is on that first day, try and think of it as it's, it's the start of the process and, and your objective is to scan through the whole thing as fast as possible, create this defects list, get all the stakeholders down to ground level because the builder probably wants to try and sign off on that day. The builder thinks that after that two-day witness session, he's going to get handed over and that's not going to happen. So that, that list brings everyone down to earth. So, and it's also going to buy the BMS company another two to four weeks to actually get the thing finished. And it's going to buy you another day or two to come back and to start properly testing. So it's very important that, like everybody else is playing this game on this first political milestone in the program, it's important that you, as the mechanical consultant, whoever you are, son of the BMS, is also playing that game and setting it all up in a good way to finish. So if you guys got some value out of that video, got a few ideas, please like and subscribe and I will see you next week when we talk through day two of BMS Witnessing. Mm -hmm.